There is a lot of online advice about branding and marketing your business, but something I find that is often missing is how to apply the information to your business and actually use it to grow your aligned audience. Hang on, y'all, because we're diving in deep today. Welcome to the Grow Your Business for Good show. This is a place where coaches and consultants gather so you can learn how to lead a world-class business that does not tax your time, your energy, or your financial resources. We are your hosts, M. Shannon Hernandez. And Amy Hager of the Joyful Business Revolution. And our number one goal is to bring you clarity and insight on how to grow your business for good. All right. It's all too easy to get lost into those to-dos and instead of spending time getting to the heart of your business. So we're going to be sharing some practical advice for you to fine tune your brand strategy and grow your aligned audience. And if you've missed the last episode, so episode one of season seven, press pause and go back and listen to it first. Cause I think it's really going to help you as we build on in this episode. We are going to give you a quick recap, but there are some drops of gold of how to create your brand messaging strategy that so that you're unforgettable at episode one of season seven. So go back, but Shannon, give us the quick recap. Well, wait, I am stuck on this beautiful language you use, drops of gold. What are you envisioning here? I'm well, seeing like rain and drops of gold falling from the sky. I'm liking it. Well, so I'm envisioning like words and thoughts dropping from the sky. <laughs> That's gold. That's money. <laughs> That's gold, y'all. It's money. Oh, we're going to talk about money today too. So I hope you're ready. Yay. Yay. We love talking about money at Joyful Business Revolution. All right, so let's do a recap uh, quickly. Mainly, we're going to focus on the mindset where people get stuck on the mindset around what we covered in the last episode, all right? So mission, right? We talked about needing to lead with your mission, all right? And the reason why, <clears throat> something that we tell our clients all the time, people buy your why, right? People will buy your why before they're ever buy your what. They're attracted to your why. They're attracted to your mission. They're attracted to who you show up in the world as. They're attracted to what's important to you, right? And so our mission here at Joyful Business Revolution is to lead with kind messaging, to unite business owners regardless of sex, gender, religion, race, politics, on and on and on. We are a safe space for business owners to grow, right? This is our why. We believe in kindness. We believe in joy. We believe in love. We believe in leading with the mission. And it's often why I now know people will say, I want to work with you, but I don't even know what you do. So can you tell me what you do? Yeah. I'm like, certainly. But we've sold them on the mission and our values, which is the next thing I want to talk about, the mindset around your values. And we covered this um, extensively in episode one, but often we have to like uh, put a box around our values and our voice when we're working in corporate, when we're working as a school teacher, when we're working for an organization, we don't want to rock the boat, right? Right. But your values are super important that you're conveying these as part of your messaging strategy because you are not two people. You don't have a professional work life and a personal brand, right? You are one person. You can't be two people. So we want you to be the one person. We want you to lead with your mission in your uh, messaging strategy. We want you to share your values, share what's important to you. Because people buy your why, they also buy from you when they like you. Yeah. How do they ever know they're going to like you if you don't ever share anything, quote unquote, likable, right? right? 
is really important. This is the mindset stuff that gets people tripped up. And, and the I last think- thing that we really talked about was this voice. How do you develop that voice, that unique personality in your content, in your marketing, in your messaging? And as scary as it seems for many of us, because once again, we've been stuffed into little boxes by society and religion and how our parents raised us and uh, former jobs, we didn't know how to take a stand on things or we couldn't take a stand on the things that actually mattered to us and the things that actually care that we care about. So I will say entrepreneurship, is a beautiful journey into finding yourself again, finding your mission, finding your values, finding your voice, finding your vision, and sharing that with the world. I told y'all I'm getting fired up on this one. So we're going to talk now about who makes up this aligned audience, right? You hear it all the time. Oh, you got to grow an audience. You got to grow an audience. Well, uh, you don't want any audience, right? You want an audience who believes in your mission, your vision, your values, and resonates with your voice. And so Amy and I have done a lot of work over the last couple of years, really defining what we call the four C's of your aligned audience. So Amy, let's talk about these four C's because they're really important. They each have their own role. Right. And I think before we dive too deep into the four C's, the one thing that I want to talk about about your aligned audience is a lot of time we get wrapped up or we hear people who are so wrapped up in thinking and about getting more clients. It's more and more clients. I need more clients. I need more clients. And we really want to focus on helping you expand further and faster. We really want to help you grow. And it's not just through clients and it's a, through those really aligned audience members. And it's the four C's. C number one is connector. Number two is collaborators. Number three is cheerleaders. And number four, yes, is clients. And so when you think through how to define your connectors, those are the people who you're connecting with, who are helping you expand to be more visible, to find more of those aligned audience members. And they're really the ones who are going to come across someone and say, hey, you should meet meet my friend Shannon. I think she could really help you. Those are those connectors. And when we think about, well, how do we meet our connectors? Well, in this brand, we love doing mastermind dinners. Shannon's got one later on today. And it's pretty cool because she is having dinner with Five people she doesn't know, two people she does know, and then she's the other person at the dinner table. And it's really, really interesting from these mastermind dinners, who has come into our universe because they knew someone who did a mastermind dinner with us before because they've been a client or something along those lines. So really figuring out how to find your connectors and how to find it in your way, I think is super duper key. The other group, well, Shannon, do you have anything else that you want to add about the connector group? Because this is one group I think that you're the strongest at. Yeah. Wow. I'm really glad you said that. I had a belief, a false belief years ago. Well, okay. Story time, y'all. This is important. All right. Years ago, just three years ago, my nervous system was so dysregulated. I could not I, I was having trouble barely functioning for about eh, three hours a day. That was it. I canceled all connection calls. Amy knows they, my team really had to help me through this time, right? All connection calls went to Amy. I didn't do dinners. I didn't do anything except what the bare minimum of what I needed to do with my clients and to lead my team, right? So I had a belief that I wasn't good at connecting or that I didn't like connecting, Mm -hmm. or that people were better connectors. What I now know on the other side is my nervous system was protecting me so I could heal. I'm a really good connector. So Amy, thank you for reminding me of that because I almost forgot that part, right? Well, I'm glad I reminded you before you go to dinner tonight. (laughs) Absolutely, yeah. So um, the thing about... I think you will know who a connector is in your audience 
when they say to you, who can I introduce you to? Who are you looking to meet? And I will also say it is not a skill 90% of people have. And I think it's because there's only about 10% of the world that are true connectors. So as a connector, that can feel lonely sometimes. I'm constantly making introductions for people. And if I was somebody that operated from triggers or trauma, which I used to, my old self would have been like, screw that. I'm not connecting them anymore. I'm getting nothing in return. Right. Dysregulated. <laughs> All right. So it's important that you know the signs of your connectors, what they're saying to you, and you nurture those people and you nurture those relationships and you build some kind of system in your own business where you're reaching out. I spoke with a client yesterday and she said, I don't know what my problem is. I'm a connector, but I'm dropping the ball on all these connections that I've made. And I said, do you have a system in place? And she's like, I should. And I said, yeah. remember the thing I taught you, list of 25, use it. And she's right. like, oh yeah, I need to use that. I need to build a connector tab. And she yes. messaged me today, Amy, this was Melanie. And she said, just want you to know I'm on it. I've got it all lined up. I know where everyone right. is and I'm making moves. Didn't organize. And I mean, that's the thing, like connecting for those of us who are connectors does come easily, but there's a lot in our beautiful brains. We can't remember and hold everything up there. So really get a system into place to make sure that you are nurturing those connectors because they're so important to your aligned audience. The other important one, well, I mean, there's three more. Number two, collaborators. And when you really think about your collaborators, those are people who also serve some of the same clients, have some of the same aligned audience members. They also probably share some similar values as well. And when you feel that there's that synergy between your two businesses and between your two missions and visions and you two, then that's a really good sign that you could be collaborators. And some of the things that we do with collaborators is, you know, we'll do lead magnet exchanges in our emails. Um, we do teaching exchanges. Shannon or I will go teach in their community. They may come and teach in ours or go live in our Facebook group or something along those lines. But it's different offers that really serve the same people. And that's what makes them such a great collaborator on top of the fact that you probably have mission, vision, and value alignments as well. And so Shannon, this is putting you on the spot. We've done a lot of collaborations so far this year. What do you think was the most joyful collaboration for you? Oh my God. You didn't give me time to prepare for this. I know. And you don't like it when you don't prepare for things, but I'm throwing you on the spot. You made me row last episode. <laughs> yes, I did, y'all. She rode her little rowboat out into the Atlantic. Um. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think, okay, there's two categories here. One set of collaborations I love it because it's easy all right that you can you know if you draw a straight line you can have easy collaborations to way more complex not that one's better than the other but the easy collaborations for us are lead magnet exchanges where i send a lead magnet to my audience and they send my lead magnet to their audience right so those are always super fun for me and amy i haven't been able to update you because i've been a little busy connecting and collaborating over here but i now have the rest of this year's lead magnet schedule done through december with calls booked for 2026 so i'm Wait, feeling good about that um, too far in a year yeah oh my gosh i don't know about I'm trying to think of a teaching exchange. I love when people invite me into their community to teach. I love coming in and teaching messaging and email marketing and aligned audience and all of these things. Um, so I don't know if I have a favorite besides yeah. just how they feel different, right? The energy that they feel different. And I think that's really, really important. Like the energy is, it needs to be feeling uplifting and joyful and you need to be looking forward to it and that it's something that you want to do, not something you have to do. If it feels like a chore, it is not the right 
collaboration and you really yeah. got to think through it. You really, I'd really say, do. Um, if I could say for a moment, now that I've had a moment, thank you, Amy. Um, I would say I'm really excited about the collaborators for how we have re-envisioned our retreats. Yeah. And by that, I mean, you know, we're going to Mexico. You and I went to this beautiful culinary vacation last year to do some planning for the brand. We fell in love with their vision. We fell in love with their values. We fell in love with Chef Anna and her husband, Rob, and everything they stand for and that they're doing in the mountains of Mexico. And now we're taking a group to experience that in September of next year. Right. So that's an exciting collaboration to me. We've put Italy on the books. You and I will have a call with the lady from Italy. And I knew she was a collaborator and connector when she came back to Jordan in HQ email and said, I really want to meet Shannon and Amy and plan before they start marketing. Is it possible? We're like, of course, of right. course it's possible, right? So side note, if you're interested in Mexico, we've got a few spots left. DM either myself or Amy, and we'll be happy to give you the information. Yeah, it'll be so fun. And you know, the thing about the Mexico retreat too, is Rob, the business owner and as the chef, you know, Rob and I were in the same place in Minnesota. And I was speaking to a group of college students and a group of business owners. And so I invited Rob to come share the stage with me. And it was so much fun. We had only talked on WhatsApp, but again, he rearranged his schedule to come and do this thing before going and going to a baseball game because he's such a great collaborator of ours and he values what we bring to the table and what he can bring to the table as well. So I think it's really, really good when you have great collaborators. Um, all right, the third C is cheerleaders. And these cheerleaders, <laughs> I should have went and grabbed pom-poms. So there's a couple qualifications, I think, for cheerleaders or a couple ways to describe them. So um, they could be silent people that you never know that are actually there, but maybe they're always liking your stuff or behind the scenes, they're always saying, gosh, you know, keep going, Shannon. Like what you're saying is what needs to be said in this world or something along those lines. They'll probably never buy from you but they're sending you clients. And I, one of my biggest cheerleaders, it still just blows my mind, is a childhood friend who she moved away when I was in middle school. And yeah, we've kept in touch over the years and I've been to her house. She's been to my house. And, you know, 25 years later, we're still friends. Thank God for Facebook, right? But she will share some of the most randomest things that I post on the internet. And she'll say something like, hey, check out what my friend Amy is doing. She processes insurance claims. Girlfriend's never going to buy from us. She doesn't need us. She's never going to be an entrepreneur. That's just not her, her plan. But she's one of our biggest cheerleaders. And when she started to do it, I was like, whoa, like, what is she doing? I'm so confused. But it really was like she was silently there watching me all of these years. And then all of a sudden felt really inspired to share what we're putting out there. And we've connected some really great people that were in her personal network into our community. Amy, should I share my deep, dark secret? Go for it. <laughs> All right, y'all. In my dysregulated days, <laughs> I would call these people out loud, lurkers. That is not kind. No. I literally post in our Facebook group. If you're a lurker, today's your day. Yeah. Now they would come out of the woodwork because it did actually, the messaging resonated. They know who they were, it but did. I had this epiphany, like lurker sounds kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. I like somebody lurking around your windows in the deep, dark of night while you're trying to get into the shower or something. Right. So I changed this my relationship with these people to a much more positive. They're the cheerleaders. They're the silent people forwarding your email, telling people about you, um, saying, oh my God, I met this crazy dynamic duo called Amy and Shannon at Joy. Like they, they have a job and they are sending clients to you. All right. right. So if you've ever called them lurkers, please 
change it to cheerleaders. It'll be much more energetically friendly for everyone. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And then the last of the four C's is going to be clients. And to be honest, this is the smallest circle. These are the ones who actually buy from you. And I always say like, man, could you imagine if you got a hundred new clients this month, like what would you do? Your mind would be blown, right? You can't handle a hundred clients a new month, right? So you probably only actually need one, two, three, maybe five, maybe 10. And so this is always going to be your smallest circle. But because of your connectors, because of your collaborators and because of your cheerleaders, that's why your clients are there. And so I always love to challenge you to think differently about your marketing and messaging. When you're putting things out into this world, what if your focus was on your connectors? Or what if your focus was on your collaborators? Or what if you gave a shout out to those cheerleaders? What could shift in your marketing and in your messaging if you talk to those three C's first before trying to talk to clients? Yep. And all of those people, clients included, know more people that could be clients, connectors, cheerleaders, and or collaborators, right? So if you feel like you just had this orgasmic aha, <laughs> Amy really hates when I use the word orgasm or orgasmic. If you really feel like you just had this gush of like, oh my God, I've only been talking to clients. We want to hear from you. We want you to reach out to us. We want you to DM us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We want to hear from you and for you to tell us, wow, that was mind blowing for me, right? Now we've talked a little bit, quite a bit about these four types of people. We've talked about how to uh, think about these people in terms of your community, we talked about using your vision, mission, values, and voice to call them in. So naturally, you're probably asking like, what comes next? All right, we're going to talk about two really important things here. All right, and the first one is money comes from action. Mm -hmm. All right, there's so many stories we could share with you about people who weren't using leading with their mission. And when we help them clarify their mission and they started putting it out into the world, the collaborators came, the connectors came, the clients came, right? And I want to particularly tell you about a beautiful client in our community who has just opened today her school of spiritual arts. She'd been working with us four months and y'all in four months, she has opened an entire school for spiritual arts. She's got, I think seven clients started today for their first class. That's one C. She's called in her uh, collaborators to become faculty of the school. And she's been doing interviews. And Amy, I looked at her content yesterday. She's got 12 months of content lined up from these people, wow. right? She's called in her connectors to help spread the word. And of course, the cheerleaders are watching and actually cheering her on um, energetically and many of them in her inbox. She's telling me people cannot believe that I'm doing this, right? Yeah. Money comes from action. Money comes from messaging in action. Not sitting in your Google Drive, not rolling around in your brain, not you being scared to share your mission and your vision and your values with the world and staying small. So we want you to put your messaging in action because that is where the money is. Now, Amy is also going to talk about money. Amy, take it away. Well, I mean, and sometimes when I say this to people, they're like, oh God. So I'm just going to say it. Y'all, you're in business to make money. You really, really are. Otherwise, what are you doing, right? Go volunteer somewhere. And so when we can really wrap our minds around you're in business to make money, that shift is a complete game changer because you are in complete control. 
And we have a client who was really, really struggling, like not even sending the invoices to clients that she already had executed services for and not closing sales because of her belief around money. And it really boiled down to that she really has a hard time believing in capitalism and the way our society is set up. And again, we want to make sure that we honor what you believe in and what really, really is deep into your heart, because that is part of you and a part of your business. But when we really talked through one, she's a kind person. She's going to do great things with the money that she brings in from her business. And two, she can help so many more people when she's making money. Yeah. But she can't make money if she doesn't send those invoices. And so what we kind of concluded on is there are charitable organizations that she's donating some of her profits to. So like every $100 that she's bringing in, I think 10 is going into a fund that will go to these organizations that are doing the things in the world that really you know impact her, that make her life better, that can make other lives better. And then we also talked about starting a scholarship. So that when there are those ideal clients that she is just so just to work with, but there really is that inability to invest, she can support them. And that's something we've done here at the Joyful Business Revolution for years now is we have a scholarship fund. When there is someone sitting in front of us that we absolutely want to invest in, we're able to do that through scholarship and we're able to do that through our Joy Team program too. And so you're in control, but you cannot make the impact that you want to make unless your business is making money. And so if that brings up a lot of fears and a lot of things inside your gut, let's talk through them. We absolutely need to talk through them. We need to honor them. We need to feel those things in order for you to make that impact that you want to make in the world. You can impact people through your services, but boy, you can make a larger impact with your money. Absolutely. So as I say, y'all, let's go make that money in service of you living a beautiful life, eating healthy food, doing all the things that you value and helping others around you funding uh, organizations you believe in. Right. Super important. All right. So this has been a really fun, full episode. All right. And so one of the best places, as you all know, if you're listening to Amy and I, uh, profusely spill our joy into you to start growing your audience, continue growing your audience, focus growing on your aligned audience is your email list. All right. And if you're not sure how to even do that or how to get better results, um, you know, making money from your emails, getting more aligned audience members and community into your email community, then we have something super special for you. Because you're listening to this podcast, we are going to offer you a discount code to come into our email messaging and marketing mentorship. We call this the Content Personality Club. We meet with our students in the club every month, helping them with one email a week to deepen relationships and double revenue. And we would love to have you with us. We would love to help you dial in your vision, your voice, your mission, and your values. You can use the code PODCAST500. That's PODCAST, all caps, no space, 500. When you go to the contentpersonalityclub.com and you can join us and become one of our clients. So we can help you make money in your business and make that impact that you're wanting to make as well. All right. Well, we've got to wrap this up. So in our next episode, we are going to explore the difference between brand messaging and brand positioning. So we will see you then. All right. Bye -bye. Adios. <laughs>